morning, brethren. Uh, Brother Mike's sermon text is going to be in Galatians 3, 8, and 9. And the scripture, foreseeing that God would justify the heathen through faith, preached before the gospel unto Abraham, saying, And thee shall all nations be blessed. So then they which be of faith are blessed with faithful Abraham. I thought it would be good to read the passage from which this comes from in Genesis 22, 15 through 18. Sorry. And the angel of the Lord called unto Abraham out of the heaven the second time and said, By myself have I sworn, saith the Lord, for because thou hast done this thing and hast not withheld thy son, thy only son, that in blessing I will bless thee, and in multiplying I will multiply thy seed as the stars of heaven, and as the sands which are upon the seashore, and thy seed shall possess the gate of his enemies. And in thy seed shall all nations of the earth be blessed, because thou hast obeyed my voice. The gospel preached unto Abraham is that all nations shall be blessed. And uh, the Bible says that all men have sinned and fallen short of the glory of God. But uh, we are blessed by Jesus coming down and dying for our sins. Um, I'm going to pray for Brother Mike and his sermon. Dear Heavenly Father, I pray for Brother Mike that you will give him your words and that, um, that everyone listening will be... Um, not be distracted by the things of this world. Uh, please help us to learn a lot from it. And in Jesus' name, amen. The topic that I have chosen for this year's renewal speaks of Abraham, our father in faith. Abraham was called a friend of God. And I don't want to put Abraham at a lower level, but we are the children of God. We have a little more than what Abraham had in that Christ is dwelling within us. This was not a mistake. This was planned from the beginning. And we can see as what Brother Mark read that this was proclaimed to Abraham to happen. That all the nations of the earth shall be blessed. Now we can... I'm getting ahead of my notes. We can see in the first three verses of chapter 12 that Abraham was blessed, was promised three things. Land, peace, and a blessing on his seed. This is the first three things that God spoke to Abraham. How much more of a blessing it is to us that he is speaking to us from heaven through Christ. God called Abraham out of Haran to a place that Abraham knew not. Abraham left his country and kindred to follow after God. In Genesis chapter 12, the first three verses, we see blessings that God had promised Abraham. And in verse 3, three we see the promise that he had given for all of mankind. Not just the mankind at that time, but for all of the creation of this, what we call time. In Genesis 12, 3, And I will bless them that bless thee, and curse them that curseth thee. And in thee shall all the families of the earth be blessed. This is the original promise of the gospel that was spoken to Abraham. Amen. This was the promised gospel. This was speaking of one to come. That all the families of the earth be blessed. And Paul expounds on this in the book of Galatians. Can we imagine, without the epistles, how much darkness we would have? Paul and the other writers of the epistles had just opened up and revealed all of these mysteries and all these shadows and all these types that we've seen in the Old Covenant and the Old Testament. But because of these epistles, we can see the true meaning of some of these, some of these phrases that were obscured to mortal men as brother Mike spoke of so we see in Galatians 3 8 and the scripture foreseeing that God would justify the heathen through faith preached before the gospel unto Abraham saying in thee shall all nations be blessed 
So then they, which be of faith, are blessed with faithful Abraham. Think about the thoughts of the Pharisees at the time. The heathen shall be justified? How is this to be so? There was a separation between the Jews and the heathens, the Jews and the rest of the world. The Jews, the Israelites, they were the chosen children of God, the chosen nation of God, and everybody else was bunk. So how was this going to happen? Also in Genesis chapter 22, the angel of the Lord states the promise of the gospel in this manner. Genesis 22:18 it says, And in thy seed shall all the nations of the earth be blessed, because thou hast obeyed my voice. This was prior to the fulfilling of the sacrifice. This was prior to the offering of this ram. Because Abraham believed, because Abraham's faith, all the nations would be blessed. So we see that it is because of faith and not the things that we do that bring us to the throne of grace. Amen. On the surface, you can miss that this is speaking of the one to come, can't you? You can. Just if you just, bl just if you read through it, thinking, okay, Abraham's going to have seed. We see Isaac here. And in, 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 the, in the carnal mind, you can put all this together and this and that, but you cannot see of this is prophesying. This is showing that one is truly going to come and bless all the nations of the earth. The one in whom the true blessings and the true covenant of God would be given. Paul brings it out again in Galatians 3.16. Now to Abraham and his seed were the promises made. He saith not, and to seeds as of many, but as of one, and to thy seed which is Christ. Amen. And this I say that the covenant that was confirmed before of God in Christ, the law which was 430 years after, cannot disannul that it should, be make, that it should make the promise of none effect. This true seed was Christ himself, the true lamb, the perfect sacrifice of God. God was proclaiming that this promise of the gospel would be provided through his lamb. That it would be of God's offering and not man's offering. God's working and that not of the law. Remember, the law could not disannul it. And it's because of Abraham's disobedience, I'm sorry, obedience, that this was bringing brought forth. And if we look, if we can look, we can see that it was because of Christ's obedience. That he came to do the will of the Father. Remember, the covenant was between God and Christ himself. And Christ came to do the will of the Father and we receive the blessing because of his obedience. Amen. Amen. For he took, for verily he took not on him the nature of angels, but he took on him the seed of Abraham. This was all a work of God. This was all, this, this didn't happen just out of happenstance. God orchestrated all of these seeds to work through. So, Christ could be brought forth and God would be justified. God would be shown faithful. This is the Lord's doing and it is marvelous in our sight. This is speaking of the one to come, one who would be born from the loins of Abraham, one who would be born on truly bringing the nations of the earth blessed, the seeds of the nations of the earth blessed. These promises of God must be received through faith and not by works. If they were of works or by the law, then the promises would be owed to us because of debt and not because of faith, because we deserved it. What did we deserve? We deserve death. For all men have fallen short of the glory of God. I'm glad that I have not received that which, which was due to me. But Christ died, so I did not receive that. 
so I don't have to receive that. We can see Abraham's faith in God all through Christ, all through Abraham's life. When God told Abraham to go and offer his only begotten son, we know because of Hebrews 11 that through that three-day trek, think about, the, think about the thoughts that were on Abraham's mind. We have a little inkling of what he was thinking about on them three days. That through that three-day trek that Abraham was looking to the resurrection. He was looking to the resurrection and the promise that was going to come through Isaac. When the gospel is truly preached, it's pointing to the resurrection. It points our mind, our focus on the resurrection. And I, Abraham had the same view. The promise of the gospel provokes this reckoning on the resurrection of God. And that the gospel and the resurrection points to the glory of God himself. Because Abraham knew. Remember. Remember. In Abraham's mind, Isaac was dead. He received, he received him back in a figure. And that whole time, Abraham knew that when he offered up Isaac, that God was going to bring him back from the dead because the promise of God was through Isaac. Abraham was so sure of God's promise that he told his servants at the bottom of the mount that he and the lad would return. He knew this. How did he know this? Because of his faith. Because he believed God. And he told Isaac that God would supply a lamb. Isaac said, here's the fire, here's the wood, but where is the offering? Abraham said, God will supply a lamb. Abraham knew. This faith of Abraham was so compelling that it changed all of Abraham's life. It changed his life from serving self to serving a living God. Even to the offering of his son. This transforming power of the gospel is the power of God unto salvation. To the Jews first and then to the Gentiles, to the heathen, to the seeds of the rest of the world. This promise brought hope, joy, and assurance and faith in our God. This promise set Abraham's eyes on things that were afar off and kept his eyes and focus on God and knowing that God is faithful in fulfilling his promises. Abraham never once staggered at the promise of God through unbelief, but was strong in faith, glorifying God, giving glory to God. This is what happens when we hear the true gospel. We glorify God in our actions, in our life, in everything that we have. And we saw this in Abraham's life. During this time on the mount, Abraham's faith was being tested and Abraham proved himself to be faithful. But we got to remember, it wasn't only Abraham that proved himself faithful. God also proved himself faithful in providing an offering in the stead of Isaac. Abraham knew that God would provide a lamb. God provided a ram. Now, this, this wasn't a mistake. We know this. This ram was pointing to a time to come of the true lamb of God. Abraham was so determined to offer his only begotten son that the angel of the Lord had to call out to him twice. Abraham, Abraham. He had to get his attention. I could see the determination on Abraham's, on Abraham. He's grabbing that. He, he's ready. He's ready to sacrifice. The angel, Abraham, Abraham, he called out. And what happened? Abraham stayed his hand. Abraham stayed his hand. When Abraham looked up, he saw a ram caught by his horns in a thicket. And then God states the promise of the gospel to Abraham. This is telling me 
that it is not by man's offering that can bring forth the promises of God, but that which God provides himself. Abraham is willing to offer his own son, his own works, so to say, to appease God. But we see that God would not accept that. He offered, God gave his own sacrifice, his own offering for Abraham to take. Abraham had to put aside his works and work in the workings of God. God provided and Abraham did. Abraham still had to offer, still had to kill this ram, but it wasn't his offering that he was sacrificing, it was God's offering. It was through the loins of Isaac that the gospel promise would be brought forth. But it wasn't in Isaac himself, was it? It was one to come. It was through the loin. The fulfillment of the promise would be provided in the true offering of God, the true lamb, which is Christ. We look down a handful of thousand years later and we see John proclaims, this is the Lamb of God. This is life. Life can only be given by the one who gives life. And we have the first instance of this in the garden when God breathed his breath into the nostrils of man, of Adam. So, in order for God to fulfill his promises, he has to give the offering because it is only in him that gives life. We don't have life to offer. We truly, I can't give someone else life. It's God. So in order for him to fulfill his promises, he has to offer everything that is needed for that. And we just have to work in those offerings. The gospel cannot be fulfilled in the law or by any of man's means. This is why it is of faith and not by the law. We know that without faith it is impossible to please God. God was well pleased in Abraham. In fact, Abraham was called the friend of God. For he that cometh to God must believe that he is and that he is a rewarder of them that diligently, what? seek him. If we're seeking after something, we have to believe in that something. And the more we believe in that something, the more we're going to seek after it. I'm not going to go out and seek after something very hard if I don't truly believe in it. But if I truly believe in it, I'm going to go out, I'm going to sell all that I have. The promises that are given are only as strong and are only as enduring as the one who gives the promise. If I have someone who is of an unworthy character and promises me something, I'm not going to put much stock in that. But if I have a faithful brother or sister who promises me something, I'm going to put stock in that. And even the more, God who is faithful when he promises, he never disappoints. So a promise is only as strong as he who gives the promise. Abraham knew that what God had promised that he was able to perform. This led to Abraham laying hold of, being persuaded of, and embracing those promises through faith. Through faith he counted not the things of this earth dear to him, but sought after the country whose builder and whose maker was God. Truly, through Abraham's faith in the gospel preached, he had received those promises. All of the promises of God are broken down in this, that which he has said, that God has said it, and he was able to perform it. So that's how these are broken down, is that God is able. And he is able because Christ has fulfilled all things needed. Amen. Amen. 
All these promises of God are in Christ and Christ alone. Amen. Christ, the seed, is the fulfillment of the promised gospel. It ultimately was not in the ram that was supplied in Isaac's stead, or it wasn't even of Isaac himself. It didn't come through the law or even Moses. It came through Christ. Yes, all of these things and the more were of necessity. They truly were. But they all were types and shadows. They all pointed to the one to come in whom the promises were given. All the promises of God are confirmed in Christ Jesus. Jesus said to the Jews with this one point, your father Abraham rejoiced to see me, to see my day, and saw it and was glad. This confounded the Jews as it should have. They couldn't see. Their eyes were blinded. They said, you're not even 50 years old. How could you have seen Abraham? Of course, this confounded the Jews in knowing that Christ could not have, see, could not have been seen in the days of Abraham. But we know that through faith, through faith, Abraham did see Christ in his day by seeing the faithfulness of God and providing the offering of the ram. Right. And seeing that God was faithful, just as Brother Mike preached, our faith shows us the end of our salvation. Yeah. Our faith shows us the face of Jesus Christ. Our faith shows us all of these promises fulfilled. So we know that Abraham truly saw Christ in his day. Abraham knew that God would eventually provide a lamb for a perfect offering. And by God fulfilling his promises to Abraham, Abraham saw Christ through faith and he rejoiced in this. The promise of the gospel was revealed to Abraham in the seeing through faith, through faith of Christ himself. This was the fulfilling of the gospel. He showed Christ to Abraham. He showed that ultimate sacrifice. God told Abraham no less than three times of the promise of the gospel. This kept the knowledge of the promise of the gospel on the forefront of Abraham's thoughts. This kept his eyes affixed on the things to come. We've got to be, we, we, got, we have got to keep the gospel on the forefronts of our thoughts. Because there are a lot of cares of this world that are bombarding ourselves every day. And when we keep the gospel, the promises on our thoughts, then those other cares, they grow strangely dim. This kept Abraham's eyes affixed. If it wasn't for the knowledge of the gospel, Abraham would have been mindful of the country from whence he came out and would have had opportunity an occasion to return. So by the gospel being on the forefront of our thoughts, those leeks and garlics are nothing to us. That, that in which we have came is nothing to us. The gospel on the forefront of our thoughts is pointing us to the heavenly realm, pointing us to the things to come, pointing us to the promises that God has for his children. But because of his faith and seeing afar off, he was mindful of that which was to come. God has given us this same knowledge and he has given us this same faith in the promises given. In 2 Peter 1.3, it tells us, according to his divine power. This is God's power. This is nothing in what man has discovered through textbooks, through anything else. It's through God's divine power that we have received. He has given unto us all things that pertains to life and godliness. God is not holding anything back. When he sacrificed his son, he gave everything that he had for our bringing forth, being brought forth to his kingdom. He has given unto us all things that pertain, pertain to life and godliness through the knowledge of him and hath called us unto glory and virtue, whereby... He's called us to this, specific, to this place for a specific reason, hasn't he? Whereby are given unto us exceeding great 
and precious promises that by these ye might be partakers of the divine nature, having escaped the corruption that is in this world through lusts. God is very, very precise in the things that he does. He brings us to this place. He gives us the things of him in order that we can escape the things of this world. He is very determined in bringing many sons to glory. The scriptures tells us in Joshua 24 that Abraham's father served other gods. By the promise of God, Abraham was able to escape the corruption that he had left behind and be partaker of the divine nature. Abraham had to leave, that's what he knew. He had to leave all those idols, all his family in order for him to receive that what God has. We have to leave also. We have to leave this world in order to receive the things that God has for us. If we keep these promises on the forefront of our minds, then we too can escape the corruption which we have left and be partakers of the divine nature that God has for us through the promise of the gospel. This promise all pertains, think about it, this promise all pertains to life and godliness. Just as the promise of the gospel pointed to Christ coming to lay his life down and to be made the perfect lamb of God, that now the promise of the gospel is pointing us to the return of the Lamb of God. Remember, we talked about the resurrection a little while ago. Now all of these, got, now, now this gospel promise is, show, is pointing us to the, re, to, to the return of Christ in which all things are going to be completed. Amen. All the promises of God has always pointed to the one to come. This knowledge and faith in the gospel is life itself because it points to him who gives life. Amen. It points to him who is to come. Just as Abraham saw Christ in his day and was glad, we too can see Christ in our day and we can rejoice. Amen. Abraham saw the salvation of God in Christ and we can too can see this salvation. The faith of Abraham has not changed. It is still set on the one who our faith is in. Just as Christ is the same yesterday, today, and forever. Amen. So the promises haven't changed. The faith hasn't changed. Christ hasn't changed, nor God has changed. In Genesis 17, God had given Abraham a covenant of circumcision. And in verse 13, it speaks of those who are not of Abraham's seed. In Genesis 17, 13, it says, He that is born in thy house, and he that is bought with thy money, must needs be circumcised, and my covenant shall be in your flesh as an everlasting covenant. What is this speaking of? This is speaking of the other nations. Those who are not born of Abraham's seed bought with money these are those who are bought with a price brethren we are bought with a price the precious blood of Christ Amen. we are not brought into the kingdom through this bloodline of Abraham we have been bought with a price we are of the other nations. We are the strangers that have been brought into the fold of God through faith. We are of the camp of the seed of the whole world. We are now the children of Abraham through faith. And by this, we are blessed. We are blessed with faithful Abraham. We are now able to live out the promises of the gospel that was spoken to Abraham. We have these first fruit tastes of the things to come. We have this indwelling of the Holy Spirit living within us. We are able to live out these promises. We are the fulfillment and the partakers of it, aren't we? In Galatians 3.14, that the blessing of Abraham might come on the Gentiles through Jesus Christ, that we might receive the promise of the Spirit through faith. Have we received the promise of the Spirit? So what that tells me, 
were living it out. This gospel that was preached to Abraham was set on what God was going to do and not man. Man's ways or actions can never thwart God's ways. And the laws will ne was never established to disannul the promise of God. The gospel of God was preached to Adam, Adam and Eve in the garden by God proclaiming to the serpent, and I will put enmity between thee and the woman, and between thy seed and her seed, it shall bruise thy head, and thou shalt bruise his heel. This was the first promise of the gospel, that Christ would destroy he who brought man away from God. This is speaking of the one who is going to destroy him who had the power of death. This was speaking of the one who is going to give eternal life so that death has no more power over God's children. Amen. This is he of whom it was spoken that would bring life and immortality to life. The one who is the way, the truth, and the life. Way back in the garden, we see Christ. This was speaking of the promise of the gospel in Jesus Christ our Lord. The faithful eyes of Abraham saw the promise of the gospel in Christ Jesus, and we too have seen these exceeding great and precious promises. And in closing, let us remember that it is through faith and not by sight, not by works, that the promise is given. That the promise of the gospel that was preached to Abraham is still as valid today as it was then. It is by faith that we are able to please God, and it is through faith that he is able to work in us to do and to will of his good pleasure. Amen. It all has to do with faith and believing what God has said. Abraham staggered not. He staggered not at the promises of God, but he knew that God, what God had said that he was able to perform even to the raising his son from the dead. The promise of the gospel provoked Abraham to good works and look to the one to come. It revealed in Abraham the resurrection and the faithfulness of God. It showed Abraham that in the promise of the gospel was life and a walk with God. Brethren, we have been grafted into the true vine of God and we are able to partake of the root and the fatness thereof. Through faith, we are able to partake in the receiving of the preciousness of God's gift to man through his son, Christ Jesus. And this, we are joint heirs and we are fellow partakers of the inheritance that is laid up for us. We are truly in the midst of receiving that which was promised. And let me leave us with one last verse in Galatians 3.26 that says, For ye are all, it says all, for ye are all the children of God by faith in Jesus Christ, in Christ Jesus. For as many of you as have been baptized into Christ have put on Christ. Amen. There is neither Jew nor Greek, there is neither bond nor free, there is neither male nor female, for ye are all in one are all one in Christ Jesus. And if ye be Christ's, then ye are Abraham's seed and heirs according to the promise. Amen. The gospel that was preached to Abraham is just as valid and it changes our life just as much as it did Abraham's life. Amen. And we are accepted of God even the more because of Christ. Thank you.